Hey makers. Today we are going to read a book that is really special to me. It was a favorite when I was a little kid. Um, and it is called The Big Orange Splot. And it is by Daniel Manis Pinkwater and it is published by Scholastic. I will put a link on where you can find this in the comments. Um, so be sure to check that out if you wanna add this to your at-home library. All right, here we go. The Big Orange Splot. Mr. Plumbean lived on a street where all the houses were the same. See how same they are? He liked it that way. So did everybody else on Mr. Plumbean's street. This is a neat street, they would say. Then one day, a seagull flew over Mr. Plumbean's house. He was carrying a can of bright orange paint. No one knows why. And he dropped the can, no one knows why, right over Mr. Plumbean's house. It made a big orange splot on Mr. Plumbean's house. <gasps> oh, too bad, everybody said. Mr. Plumbean will have to paint his house again. I suppose I will, said Mr. Plumbean, but he didn't paint his house right away. He looked at the big orange splot for a long time. Then he went about his business. The neighbors got tired of seeing that big orange splot Someone said, Mr. Plumbean, we wish you'd get around to painting your house. Okay, said Mr. Plumbean. He got some blue paint and some white paint, and that night he got busy. He painted at night because it was cooler. When the paint was gone, the roof was blue, the walls were white, and the big orange spot was still there. Then he got some more paint he got red paint, yellow paint, green paint, and purple paint. In the morning, the other people on the street came out of their houses. Their houses were all the same, but Mr. Plumbean's house was like a rainbow. It was like a jungle. It was like an explosion. There was the big orange splot. And there were little orange splots. There were stripes. There were pictures of elephants and lions and pretty girls and steam shovels. The people said, Plumbean has popped his cork, flipped his wig, blown his stack, and dropped his stopper. They went away muttering. That night, Mr. Plumbean bought carpenter's tools. That night, he built a tower on top of his roof and he painted a clock on the tower. And there it is. The next day, the people said, Plumbean has gushed his mush, lost his marbles, and slipped his hawser. They decided they would pretend not to notice. That very night, Mr. Plumbean got a truck full of green things. He planted palm trees, baobabs, thorn bushes, onions, and frangipani. In the morning, he bought a hammock and an alligator. When the other people came out of their houses, they saw Mr. Plumbean swinging in a hammock between two palm trees. They saw an alligator lying in the grass. Mr. Plumbean was drinking lemonade. Plumbean has gone too far. This used to be a neat street. Plumbean, what have you done to your house? The people shouted. My house is me and I am it. My house is where I like to be and it looks like all my dreams, Mr. Plumbean said. The people went away. They asked the man who lived next door to Mr. Plumbean to go and have a talk with him. Tell him that we liked we all liked it here before he changed his house. Tell him that his house has to be the same as ours so we can have a neat street. The man went to see Mr. Plumbean that evening. They sat under the palm trees drinking lemonade and talking all night long. 
early the next morning, the man went out to get lumber and rope and nails and paint. When the people came out of their houses, they saw a red and yellow ship next door to the house of Mr. Plumbean. What have you done to your house? They shouted at the man. My house is me, and I am it. My house is where I like to be, and it looks like all my dreams, said the man, who had always loved ships. He's just like Plumbean, the people said. He's got bees in his bonnet, bats in his belfry, and knots in his noodle. Then one by one they went to see Mr. Plumbean late at night. They would sit under the palm trees and drink lemonade and talk about their dreams. And whenever anybody visited Mr. Plumbean's house, the very next day that person would set about changing his own house to fit his dreams. Whenever a stranger came to the street of Mr. Plumbean and his neighbors, the stranger would say, this is not a neat street. Then all the people would say, our street is us and we are it. Our street is where we like to be and it looks like all our dreams. The end. What do you think about Mr. Plumbean's house? Did you like it better when it looked just like everybody else's house? Did you like it when he changed it just a little or a lot? Do you think that having all his neighbors change their houses too made their street more cool or less cool? What do you think Mr. Plumbean and his neighbors talked about while they stayed up all night drinking lemonade talking about their dreams? And how did he get them to change their mind about trying to be the same as everybody else? How do you feel when someone tries to make you feel like you need to be like everybody else? And how do you feel when somebody lets you feel like you can be whatever you want? You could be who you are. Think about those things while we work on our drawing project. Like I said, this was a favorite book when I was little, so favorite that it's now falling apart. And I actually got the idea to read this book to you guys because my mom sent me videos of her reading it for me to share with my son at bedtime. I hope you really loved The Bleak Orange Splot. Let's get started on our project. For this project, all you need is a paper, pencil, Sharpie, or a black marker, and something to color your picture with. We're gonna start with our pencil. And for this project, we're gonna make, you can start with just your own house, but I think I'm gonna do one for my whole street, houses for my whole street. So my street, each house is gonna be a house for each member of my family. So I'm gonna need, there are four people in my family. There's me and Mr. B my son Willem, and my stepson Tan. So I'm gonna do four houses. So the first thing I wanna draw is just a street, which is just a straight line across my paper. So I've got my paper the wide way. And I'm gonna go straight across, or pretty straight across. And I'm gonna do another one right beneath it. Because in our book, all the houses have a little driveway leading up to them. If we can find the street, here we go. So see how the, there's a little driveway. So there's my line, and then I can put the actual street here if I want to. All right, then I need to make four houses. And to start with, I'm gonna sketch the houses as if they're all the same. So kind of like this picture here, but I need four houses. Each house is a rectangle shape, and I need four. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, four, okay. And then in between each house is where that driveway is gonna come down. And there are two lines that go almost straight down, but they kind of spread out just a little bit. So think of a driveway as a straight road, but because it's going off into the distance, we're gonna switch the lines just a tiny bit like that. So you could make them just straight up and down, but try to slant them just a little bit. 
and there's one on each side like that one two three four and driveways then each of these houses from our book had four boxy windows so i'm going to go ahead and put those on now if i know right away that part of my house the windows are going to get covered up i could skip drawing all the windows for example when the neighbor turns his house into a ship you can't see these windows anymore. He boards them up and covers them up and puts little portholes at the top. But you know, even if I had a ship house, I like to have lots of windows, so I'm gonna do that. So I've got four box houses, with four windows each, and then we're gonna add a roof. All the roofs on Mr. Plumbing Street are slanty, kinda like we just did our driveway. Our driveway, we had a straight line. We slanted it out a little to make the driveway like this. For the roofs, we're gonna make it just a little bit more slanted. So I'm gonna go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And if you have, you know, three people in your family or you only wanna do this just for you, that's okay. You can make as many or as few houses as you want. You could also make each house for everyone in your family on a different paper so that everyone has their own paper to hang up somewhere. All right, so there's my four houses, and now they get a flat roof. Four. The reason we're doing all of this in pencil so far is so that as I decide to decorate each house for each member of my family, I can change and erase things. And this gives me something to start with instead of starting completely from scratch. None of the neighbors in this book started completely from scratch. They didn't say, oh, that's a cool idea. I'm gonna go build something brand new over here in this empty part of the neighborhood. They all had to start with what they already have. And I think that's important because when we're talking about the message of the story, we have to start with what we already have, which is us, right? And when we live, we have to decide if we want to be use what we have and try to turn it into exactly like what everybody else has or is, or if we wanna take what we already have and expand on it and help it grow so that we become all the way ourselves. All right, so let's think about things that I'd like for my family. Willem likes superheroes, so somehow his is gonna have superhero stuff. His favorite superhero right now is Spider-Man, but he also likes Batman, Black Panther, just about any superhero you can name. Mr. B right now is really into trees and tying knots and he really likes the color orange and he really likes the color brown. I really like art and plants and baking and Tayan, my stepson, he really loves video games uh, and his favorite food right now is probably pizza or chicken. So I might put those things in. So I'm going to doodle a little bit and come right back. Here you can see I've started two houses, so I thought about the things that the people in my family like that make them you, them, and I've started to put those things in their pictures. So here's Mr. B's house. I turned his plain boxy house into a log cabin, and it's got these hanging swings in front of one window, and there's a window behind this, but this is like a big net out of ropes with all kinds of cool knots in it that you can climb up to get to this roof, which right now is the shingles look like leaves. And then growing out of the top of his house, and really I think it would be growing all the way through his house, so maybe we should add a branch here coming out of a window. And maybe I could add another branch here coming out of a window. This is a big tree growing out of his house so that he can climb and practice all of his cool knot tying to use to climb. So Mr. B's house is all about climbing. I think I'm going to make some things in here orange, just because, like I said, that's his favorite color. Or maybe his yard will have all orange plants. Over here, I've started my house, which has a window shaped like a cookie. So I'm imagining it being like a stained glass cookie window. And these are paint splotches, kind of like the big orange splot. And my chimney, here's some smoke coming out. My chimney is paintbrush. I'm also gonna have a big garden with lots of grasses. I really like grasses. Um, so I'm gonna have a big yard here with grasses. And then I'm gonna just kind of keep going. All right, 
So I've got some detail put in on all of my houses. Willems, I went in and put in some spider webs hanging off that he can climb on and spider webs in the window. There's a tower with the Batman symbol, um, like the spotlight, so this will glow and some bat wings and then some cloths. To make that one, that one almost looks like a cool Halloween house. To make that one a little less scary, I'm not gonna use like blacks or dark purples. I'm gonna keep it in like red and blue and yellow because lots of superheroes use those primary colors. Over here on Tans, I made him a giant flat screen TV at the top of his house and another one just under the roof. Um, and then there's an awning here and there's outside chairs like couches and comfy chairs so that he and his friends can sit outside in the yard under this big shade awning and they can all have a screen to play video games on. Right over here, I put a cool little pizza oven so they can make their pizzas anytime they want, and they can just hang out and play video games and have snacks. What do your houses look like? What kinds of things are you putting in there? Do you have things coming out the top or out the front? What are the things that would be special inside? What are ways that you can add stuff to the yard to also show that this belongs to this certain person? Once you get everything drawn how you want with pencil, we're gonna take a Sharpie or a black marker and we're gonna start outlining. So I'm gonna do Mr. B's tree here. Give it some cool trunk parts. I feel like this tree almost needs its own little tree house inside. And to show that it's kind of coming down, I'm actually gonna make like a hole in the roof and then have the roof come out. And I'm just gonna trace my whole thing with Sharpie and then I'm gonna color. You can see that I'm getting some of my Sharpie work done. So I'm gonna go ahead and start coloring these two. If I need a break from outlining at any time, you can start doing your color. So if you wanna outline one and color it all and then outline another and color it all, I think it's faster if you do all your outlines and then all your coloring. But sometimes my hands get tired from all of that drawing. So I like to take a break for color hands are getting tired stretch your fingers I like to stretch them as far as I possibly can and then give them a little wiggle give them a wiggle and then I squeeze as tight of a fist as I can and then I open it back up and wiggle squeeze you might even twirl and then open and wiggle and that gives your hand a nice stretch I was gonna show you how I got some cool designs in my coloring, kind of like our book here. See how everything is making a pattern in the lines when he colors? You can also see it here. If we look at the grass, everything goes up and down, or the sky follows along. And you can see the difference between that neatness and this grass, but you can use that within your shapes. So here I have a tree and I outlined everything in this outside edge inside my tree right here and then I started making arcs back and forth and back and forth as I could to get some patterns in there. I'll show you a different way of how I did it on this roof here because that's a big open space. All right I'm going to make that a nice bright blue and I'm going to start by going around the edge like so, and then I'm gonna follow down these little edge spots too. Okay, and then I'm gonna make this roof go up and down. So I'm just gonna start somewhere straight up and down and crisscross, and you can see that everywhere my marker lines touch each other just a little bit, they make a slightly darker blue. And that's exactly how he got this pattern here. So he went, you can see that it's darkest right here around this bird and around this pail. So he went around those things, the artist, and then he made curved lines back and forth and wherever things overlapped a little bit, they got darker. Neat, huh? And I'm gonna make this little roof the same way. So I'm gonna go around and down. So they match. I'm gonna keep coloring however I want. So let's see, I'm gonna need some green in my leaves. You don't have to make your picture neat and tidy like that, 
but if you want to, you can. Maybe messy look is part of what makes you, you. But even if we do a little bit of just free coloring where you just kind of go all over, we want to make it neat enough that we're not making this picture that doesn't make sense anymore. You don't want it so messy that you can't tell what anything is. All right. And then my little mini tree parts around the outside edge everywhere. And then I did an arc. arc. And I'm just gonna keep going until my drawing is finished. Here you can see that I have finished my first two houses all the way, and I'm actually gonna stop and take a break there. It's such a beautiful day. I like to take breaks when I'm making my art sometimes, maybe to go play outside or go for a walk, and then I'm gonna come back and finish. But I wanted to get this done so that I can show you all and post this video. So here we go. You can see that I didn't have the right color markers with me for every spot in my picture, so it's okay. Here I used colored pencils. Here I used crayons and up here. You can see that I did the same thing though where I made my line directions matter. We call that making directional lines in art. The street is flat and going this way, so I made my lines go that way. Grass grows up, so even though this is just a flat yard shape, I'm gonna make my lines go up and down because it's like there's grass growing. Again, you could put things in your yard like I did over here. I wish I'd put some kind of cool obstacle course here. And Mr. B really loves fruit and fruit trees, so I kind of wish I'd put in some garden for him and a fruit tree or two so he could go out in front of his special house and pick apples and peaches and plums and apricots and limes and lemons. I think he would love that. Once it's all in marker, it's hard to go change it, so be sure you get your houses just how you like them in pencil before you go in with that marker. But that's it for today, guys. Please have moms and dads share your drawings with me. They can email them to me at MissMegan'sMakeRoom at gmail.com or they can post and share things via Facebook and Instagram. My name there is Miss Megan's Make Room. I hope you all had fun with this drawing. I hope you enjoyed a very special favorite childhood book of mine. And I hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.